Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Lewis University's Television Network. Today is Monday, September 23rd, 2019. I'm Lewis Chavez. And I'm Margarita Cremitas. And we begin with our top national and international stories. Longtime British tour company Thomas Cook collapsed this morning, leaving about 600,000 travelers worldwide stranded. This is the largest peacetime repatriation of British nationals in history. The Aviation Authority will be running more than 1,000 flights over the next two weeks to get travelers home. Unfortunately, customers who had hotel-only packages won't be bailed out. Thomas Cook's CEO apologized to customer and employees, calling it, a, calling it a deeply sad day. The company has been in business for 178 years and employed more than 21,000 people, and all of those jobs are now at risk. The tour operator and travel company say it has ceased trading, meaning it's heading toward liquidation after years of struggling to turn a profit in a changing travel industry. Greek police have arrested a Lebanese man who is suspected of hijacking the TWA flight 487 in 1985. 65-year-old journalist Mohamed Saleh was stopped during a routine security check when his description matched a German, German warrant for his arrest. Saleh was wanted in Germany two years after the hijacking for a kidnapping in 1987. The Lebanese embassy in Greece is currently following the case and Saleh has been detained. The suspect remains in custody in the island of Syros, where he will soon be relocated to a high-security prison in Athens. The suspect denies any involvement in the hijacking. The much-anticipated Area 51 raid occurred. However, it didn't go exactly as planned. Two million people pledged on Facebook to storm Area 51, a highly classified U.S. Air Force facility on September 20th. Instead, many of the 3,000 people who actually showed up decided against storming the base after officials warned them of the consequences. There was only one alcohol-related arrest, as well as a Canadian citizen arrested for indecent exposure. Vape, vape users have begun stockpiling after New York and Michigan have banned the sale of most flavored e-liquids. One woman who began stockpiling because of her health said she spent $100 that should last her eight months. A dozen others have shared photos of their vape hauls on Reddit's vaping forum, including a man from Georgia who stockpiled 400 milliliters and a man from Nebraska who spent $75 for 400 milliliters. Both the CDC and the American Lung Association have recently stated that e-cigarettes aren't safe. Vaping has accounted for 530 cases of lung injury as reported by 38 states and one U.S. territory along with seven deaths in six states since last Friday. A Mandeville, Louisiana police captain was shot and killed in a routine traffic stop on Saturday. And another officer was shot but survived after being taken to a nearby hospital. 58-year-old Captain Vincent Liberto Jr. Lives, leaves behind a wife and seven children. The two suspects are in custody as the Louisiana State Police continues conducting an investigation on the shooting. Coming up next, we'll take a look into leading local headlines. And later, we'll take a glimpse into Lewis' life. Stay with us. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea.
Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. A 35-year-old man and his one-year-old baby were found dead on Saturday afternoon from an apparent murder-suicide inside their Joliet home. According to officials, they received a domestic disturbance call at around 2.45 p.m. when an officer arrived on the scene in the 8300 block of Buckingham Lane. The officer heard gunshots and found a 32-year-old woman and her 9-year-old daughter wounded in front of their home. The mother told the officer that her baby and her estranged husband, who was armed, were still inside the home. After unsuccessful nego negotiations, the officer breached the door and found the father and the son. The mother and her nine-year-old daughter were taken to St. Joseph's Hospital on Sunday. Neighbors held a memorial ceremony outside the home. The University of Chicago Medical Center turned away thousands of nurses on Saturday following a 24-hour strike. Although the 24-hour strike was agreed upon between the nurses, replacement nurses needed a five-day guarantee to work through Tuesday. Union nurses will be able to return to work on Wednesday, September 25th. 22-year-old man was taken into custody last Friday after crashing his car into the Woodfield Mall and navigating through the Schaumburg Shopping Center. Police said the man remains in custody and was taken to Amita Health Behavioral Med Medicine Institute for treatment. The man drove his SUV through the Sears entrance of Woodfield Mall and continued driving through the common area before crashing into a pillar. Three people were transported with very minor injuries. The man's father said the son has a, has a health condition that requires medication, but didn't say what the condition is. The mayor of Schaumburg is demanding that all Woodfield Mall entrances have protective barriers. The mall resumed normal business hours on Saturday. Lewis University's Philip Lynch Theater is back in action for the 2019-2020 school year. The Wolves is the first play about a girls indoor soccer team featuring a bicycle kick, a rare move in soccer. The 13 players are only referred to by their jersey numbers. The play will be performed on September 27th to the 29th and October 3rd to the 6th. Performances will be at 7.30 and 2.30 on Sundays. The running time is roughly 90 minutes with no intermission, and tickets will be $13 for adults, $12 for students and seniors, and $3 to Lewis students with a Lewis ID. Tickets can be purchased at the Philip Lynch Theater or online at www.lewisu.edu backslash plt. The Lincoln Landing in Lockport is celebrating its 10th anniversary with a series of lectures sponsored by Lewis University. Two events have already taken place, with a third event scheduled for September 26th. The event, titled Lincoln Landing in the Digital World, will be hosted by Lewis student Kathleen Tight at the Gaylord Building Historic Site. Tight, who is an intern at Lincoln Landing, will present an interactive conversation about electronic outreach of the historic facility. When we return, we will have a Lewis Life exclusive with Dr. Christine Billups and Dr. Jim Birkenames. And later, we'll take a look at our five day forecast. Stay with us. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea.
e. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to LUTN. I have Dr. Phillips and Dr. Burke here with me today to talk about their humanitarian experiences. How are you guys doing? Very well, well, thanks. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, Dr. You. Burke, can you tell us a little bit about the GROW Institute? Sure, Luis. Uh, the GROW Institute uh, started last year. Uh, it's a, an institute that's meant to, to really develop interfaith collaborations for justice. Mm -hmm. Interfaith and intercultural. So we're really looking at any person who's passionate about justice mm -hmm. and trying to train them in dialogue, uh, in uh, identifying what the next steps for justice are, and particularly mm -hmm. acting for justice. Perfect. It's one thing to talk about it and speak about it, but it's an entirely different thing to act on it and get into the scene about it. Yeah, and in the university, you know, we talk a lot and we think a lot. Right. But the important thing is we need to act. Of course, I agree. And what are some ways to encounter new levels of interfaith connections and collaborations with current social justice issues occurring today, do you think? I think that um, both of those things intersect very naturally because everyone has a common stake in mm -hmm. growing justice and developing the common good, right? So. Mm -hmm if we uh, gather and network with people of different traditions and of no tradition and look at the justice issues before us, it is in all our interests to work side by side and put those values and our zeal for justice into mm -hmm. action. Agreed. Um, you guys have an event upcoming on October we 17th do. for the GROW Institute. Can you guys tell me a little bit about that? Sure thing. It's, uh, we're actually having a peace teach-in that's mm -hmm. focused um, on moving uh, or changing the narratives of fear uh, and chaos into ones that connect us as human beings. Mm -hmm. And so the peace teaching is uh, October 16th through the 18th. We have okay. a marvelous uh, roster of events. Mm -hmm. Centered in that on October 17th mm -hmm. is a, a keynote presentation, which is also the second uh, Brother Jeffrey Grow Memorial Lecture, mm -hmm. and it's going to be presented by uh, Dr. and Mrs. Uh, Salul, mm -hmm. and uh, Christy can fill you in on um, their uh, their backgrounds and what yeah. they're going to focus on. Please do. They're a really exciting pair of speakers, obviously married mm -hmm. to one another, and um, and Mrs. Salul is an alum of Lewis, but they both are Syrian American and uh, Dr. Salul has dedicated much of his life and taken great risks to provide medical care in some war torn areas of the Middle East, particularly their home uh, of heritage, Syria. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, Mrs. Salul, uh, Suzanne Salul has done work within the area and developed a nonprofit called Community Sy Syrian Community Network. Mm -hmm. And um, they're doing a lot to support some of the refugees from the war in Syria. And so they're just inspiring examples of what it means to put our words into actions. Of course. And these events are happening on campus, correct? Yes. They are. So the, the keynote is October 17th, mm -hmm. uh, 7 to 8.30 in uh, St. Charles Borromeo Convocation Hall. And we really encourage everybody to come because it's going to be very interactive and really uh, uh, call us mm -hmm. to together act for justice. Well, perfect. Make sure to check out the events. And uh, thank you guys for joining us on, on uh, LHT. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Uh, for a more in depth Lewis Life interview, please see our link on Instagram. Coming up next, we have your full five day forecast. Stay with us. Did you check? Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.
You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to Lewis University's Television Network. I am Carl Zahn with your weather. Currently in Romeoville, Illinois, we're looking at 72 degrees. Feels like 72 and it's been an absolutely beautiful day. Really sunny out there. Clouds have kind of come in a little bit throughout the day, but absolutely beautiful out if you ask me. For our local temperatures, 72 up in Madison, Wisconsin, 73 down in Kankiki, Valparaiso 74, a little cooler up in Grand Rapids, getting into that 69 area, and the Windy City, a beautiful 71 degrees. For our national temperatures up in Seattle, a nice cool 59 degrees. Down in uh, Dallas, Texas, 93. Definitely warmer in the southern states as it normally is. Sarasota, 90 degrees. Nashville, Tennessee, 85. And up in Boston, 82. For our national radar, nothing really for us to be worried about in the Chicago area, but we do have a nice um, area of storms right here in a Arizona. Um, but obviously, nothing to be worried about. Absolutely no cloud coverage for the next few days here. For our local radar, again, we had some spotted showers or just random little instances of some rain, but absolutely clear for the rest of the day. For our almanac for today, a high of 73 and a low of 54 is just about perfect for our normal temperatures of a high of 72 and a low of 51. For our record temperatures from today, just a few years ago, 2017, we hit 95 degrees. And in 1995, we were all the way down at 29 degrees. For our five-day forecast, a little sporadic with the temperatures, but staying in those 70s. Um, throughout the week, it doesn't look like we're going to have much rain until that Friday. Tomorrow, a high of 77 and a low of 62 with partly cloudy. Wednesday, 75 is a high and a low of 54 with a.m. clouds and p.m. sun. And on Thursday, a high of 70 and a low of 55. So those temperatures do seem to drop on that Thursday, but kind of start climbing back up on Friday when we have some scattered thunderstorms and a high of 73. Make sure to keep up with LUTN weather on Facebook and Twitter. Now back to Margarita at the desk. All right, Carl, thank you so much for that update. Stay tuned for Sports Next. Did you check? Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. 
So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to LUTN. I'm Matt Moen. Lewis University women's tennis kicked off their season this past weekend. The Flyers competed at the ITA Midwest Regional in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Sophomore Alexandria Saradovich had the most impressive showing. She lost her first match but rebounded sharply, winning three straight, including a win over Constanza Crespo, who was ranked number 20 in Division II. Her consolation semifinal match was cut short due to weather, but you can catch Flyer Tennis next on October 4th at the Northwestern Wildcats Inventational. It was a drama-filled, action-packed, down-to-the-wire weekend in the NFL and in college football. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish proved once again that they cannot hang with the elite teams of the SEC as they fell to Jake Fromm and the third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs in front of a record-breaking sellout crowd at Sanford Stadium. The most surprising upset on Saturday, however, belongs to Pitt University as they took down 15th-ranked UCF. The upset ended UCF's national record of 27 straight non-bowl wins. In the NFL, star wideout Antonio Brown was cut from the New England Patriots amid his sexual assault allegations after being with the team for just 12 days. Yet the biggest storyline in the NFL was the debut of New York Giants rookie Daniel Jones. The sixth overall pick passed for two touchdowns and ran for two more, including a sensational game-winning fourth-quarter drive to put away the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In briefs, the Chicago Blackhawks preseason continued on Saturday as they hosted the Boston Bruins. Chicago beat Boston 3-2 off an overtime game winner from Patrick Kane. The Hawks are now 2-1-1 on the preseason and will meet the Washington Capitals at the United Center on Wednesday. The White Sox dropped the last of their three-game set against the Detroit Tigers despite hitting four home runs on Sunday. The Sox left Comerica Park taking two of three from Major League Baseball's worst team and they'll return home to start their final homestand of the year against the Cleveland Indians. The Chicago Cubs have dropped out of the postseason picture. Their dramatic collapse continued with a 3-2 loss to the St. Louis Cardinals on Sunday. The Cubs were swept in four games by St. Louis and have now dropped six straight overall. The Cubs now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by four games for the second National League wildcard spot as we head into the final week of the season. It's going to take nothing short of a miracle for the Cubbies to salvage their season at this point as they head on the road for their final six games. That's all for sports. Back to you guys. So, Matt, what happened to the Cubs? The World Series, you know, they did it. You know, you know? they came back. They, they won the World Series just a few years ago. Where are they now? Like, well, I mean, Carl, I'm shocked. If you if you asked me two <laughs> months ago that this team would be in the position that they are right now, I would have not believed you. You know, there's too much talent. It's just it, it's hard to explain. But they've slid really hard in these last couple of weeks. They've really blown it. Six at home. games in a row. Six in a row, all at home after they played so well at home all season. It's really it's really a surprise. And I don't know, it's, it's, well, it's hard to grasp right now. We know there's always next year. We there's always, always next year. Always we next always year. hope for next yeah. year. Well, that's uh, it for today's news. Thank you for watching. As a reminder, you can always keep up with Lewis News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and by visiting our website, charliemedia.press. I'm Lewis Chavez. I'm Margarita Kermitis. I'm Carl Zahn with Weather. And I'm Matt Mohan with Sports. Have a great night.